a very good morning everyone so today's lecture is on uh, immediate complete denture and uh, in the learning outcomes you will have to know the importance of immediate complete dentures then you should be able to uh, categorize the types of immediate dentures then also recall the clinical and uh, laboratory procedures um, in the pro uh, in the fabrication or the construction of immediate dentures and also uh, have a brief outline of the indications, contraindications, advantages and disadvantages of immediate complete dentures. So to introduce, you know that in the uh, construction of a uh, conventional complete denture, it takes around five or six uh, appointments. That is post four weeks of healing uh, after extraction of the last hopeless tooth, right? So during these four weeks, the patient has to stay completely edentulous. And uh, on survey and uh, on, re on uh, a lot of research, uh, it was known that patients usually suffer some social indignity and also uh, they are functionally uh, debilitated uh, for not having teeth uh, for several weeks. So in such kind of situations, uh, immediate denture is the best choice when the uh, you know the last uh, teeth are to be removed and uh, also the patient can be spared the needless embarrassment of having to appear without teeth uh, it offers several advantages as it protects the surgical site then uh, the facial form is maintained hence there is excellent appearance and uh, also the natural teeth that are remaining if they are uh, preserved till the uh, denture issue stage. They act as a guide for positioning of the denture teeth. Uh, but of course, it is quite challenging to do the steps of a, the immediate uh, complete denture when compared to your conventional dentures because the trying stage is uh, not similar and uh, there might be some minimal changes that you can expect at the uh, completion of the final denture and uh, the, the arrangement of the artificial teeth cannot be completely verified. So that is what uh, is one of the main drawbacks of immediate dentures. So to define an immediate denture is a removable dental processes fabricated for placement immediately following the removal of a natural tooth or teeth. And uh, according to Fenn, it's a denture constructed before extraction of the teeth, which it replaces and uh, is fitted immediately after the teeth are extracted. So what is the two types of dentures, immediate dentures? Conventional immediate denture, which is placed immediately after extraction, which has to be relined or refitted. And then this denture serves as a long-term process. The second type is the interim immediate denture, which enhances aesthetics and stabilization and also serves for the function of mastigation for a limited period of time, which has to be replaced with a, a successive, uh, long-term better processes. Okay, so looking at the indications, as you see these images, uh, these are the kind of clinical scenarios wherein uh, an opinion has been taken from the interdisciplinary branches like periodontics, then uh, conservative dentistry and uh, uh, oral surgery. So after uh, multiple opinions and studying detailedly that the teeth that are remaining in the oral cavity are no more of use or they cannot be preserved at all, then such kind of cases are uh, you know, suitable for construction of immediate dentures. These are situations wherein there must be rapid, uh, you know, uh, caries or a very active periodontal disease wherein, you know, you might, you might see that all the teeth are present, but if you have a look at their uh, OPG, you might notice that the bone support is completely gone. So in such kind of cases, the best thing to do would be to opt for complete extraction and then go ahead with a conventional denture or the uh, preservation of the teeth till the denture issue and go ahead with a immediate denture. Then what are the contraindications? You know, patients who are very uncooperative, who have poor general health and also those who are at high risk for surgery because in immediate denture construction, they, uh, you will have to do multiple extractions and which may cause uh, some complications systemically. So, uh, and also emotionally disturbed individuals with uh, psychological disorders. 
then looking at the advantages uh, no inentrous period so hence the appearance is maintained then the circum oral support muscle tone vto and uh, jr can be uh, up, uh, recorded appropriately then the facial height is maintained and uh, the tongue size not much alterations then less post operative pain then uh, the duplication of the natural tooth uh, shape and also position can be done easily and also the arch form in the bit is maintained the patient is more likely to adapt because you are going to give the denture immediately after uh, extraction then uh, speech and mastication is rarely compromised and uh, then correction and the refinement of the denture can be done at a later stage as well and overall in the patient's psychological and social well being is preserved so the patient need not uh, undergo uh, the embarrassment of staying without any teeth that is to stay edentulous completely edentulous then looking at the disadvantages uh we have the main disadvantage is that the anterior ridge undercut so post extraction what happens is there is a deep undercut in the labial frenal area uh, so this anterior ridge might be bulky and there might be a deep undercut uh, in these kind of uh, cases the denture might be inserted inside and it might get uh, stuck so every time the denture is being removed and placed then it might cause trauma to the underlying tissues so uh, or when you that that is especially when you are carrying out your border molding procedures so the same implies when you are doing the denture delivery as well and uh, also the presence of remaining teeth at different positions so uh, you cannot dictate and say that each case will be the same so teeth might be retained in one quadrant and uh, in in one per patient and in another patient you might see that the molars might not be uh, present so in those kind of cases there might be uh, changes in recording of centric relation records uh, centric relation so in such kind of cases uh, it's a very difficult uh, scenario where you will have to have some expertise to decide and see how it goes and uh, the trying stage the trying stage is the most important thing for any uh, uh, partial dentures or complete dentures because the patient's consent is very important when you are trying to establish the uh, when you are trying to fabricate a new processes then definitely this requires more chair side time when compared to that of the conventional dentures and of course additional appointments and uh, yeah in some percent uh, like maybe around like 5% of the cases there might be temporary impairment of speech and mastication and uh, also the bone resorption and shrinkage of the unhealed soft tissue is greater and faster and may require frequent lining so uh, you know like a scrupulous treatment planning the patient education taking informed consent from the patient plus meticulous clinical performance aided by careful use of uh, tissue conditioner will ensure that there uh, a good uh, treatment prognosis for complete uh, uh, completely uh, sorry complete immediate dentures and of course with well planned monitoring and modifications of the cids um, it can be used as a definitive processes for long term wear so what are the clinical and the laboratory procedures involved in the construction of this kind of dentures so let's say that this is one of the clinical scenario where you will have to plan uh, for the construction of an immediate denture as you notice you see that there is a lot of deposits and uh, you know the gingival inflammation marginal gingiva and also uh, you know the uh, the teeth you see there are a lot of stains and you know some of them have cervical abrasions so the patient might be having sensitivity so an overall therapy of dealing with the current situation is important because you are not going to straight away extract the teeth and just place an immediate denture because this uh, has a lot of work that has to be done so the first thing that you will have to do is you will have you can extract the posterior teeth that is mostly the premolars at the first place you can leave the molar in place because sometimes the molars can be helpful in acting as vertical stops which help in determining the vertical dimension of occlusion and also to uh, uh, to obtain uh, accurate centric relation records and also uh, oral prophylaxis has to be uh carried out uh, in 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 a 
uh, in a uh, in a uh, uh, oral profile access has to be carried out so that you know the deposits, the calculus, and the 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 you know the plaque that is accumulated has to be removed so that it does not further cause any damage to the underlying soft tissue, but uh, it has to be uh, um, you know removed and uh, there there will not be a disease condition of the soft tissue. So then once your uh, uh, you know oral cavity is prepared, then you make your primary impressions. That is, you can do it with a alginate impression and then you get your diagnostic cast. So at this stage, once you get your diagnostic cast, you also need to obtain your uh, inter-occlusal record at the time of primary impressions. And this has to be mounted on a, a mean value articulator for observation and uh, you know uh, studying the diagnostic cast. So then uh, once you have uh, got your uh, diagnostic mounting done, the next procedure will be the uh, preparation for your master cast. That is, you will have to do the final impressions. So in the uh, final impression stage, you have uh, uh, to prepare your custom trays. And uh, so that can be done in two ways. That is your single full arch custom impression or a dual arch impression technique. So when you're doing your uh, single arch impression, what you do is you can see in this picture that uh, you will be blocking out all the teeth and after which it is covered by a thin layer of modeling wax. And on top of this, you have your uh, auto polymerizing acrylic resin or uh, light cure resin with the handle in the center in the middle. Yeah, this is how your uh, tray is prepared and after this your border molding will be carried out. The tray should be 2 to 3 mm short of the vestibule after which the border molding can be carried out and impression can be made. But whereas when you are looking at the two tray or sectional uh, custom impression tray, you've got to uh, take uh, uh, the, the diagnostic cast and uh, this is usually used especially when you have like a distal extension case scenario. So in this, what you do is you make a acrylic, uh, you use autopolymerizing acrylic resin or light cure resin for the posterior uh, part. You you place a, a melted wax sheet for uh, to be adapted uh, closely onto the cast uh, on which the acrylic resin is adapted and uh, it is covered. And then uh, after which the uh, uh, after uh, uh, after which the um, the posterior section uh, can be taken the impression can be made and uh, then this posterior uh, impression that is uh, in the patient's mouth is picked up with another stock tray. So when you look at this image, you'll be able to understand this, uh, right? So there's uh, there is a, a sectional tray and uh, sorry, this is the autopolymerizing resin, the first part. And then you can see there's a demarcation between the first and the second part. After this impression is carried out, this is placed in the mouth and one more impression material is added here and this is totally picked up into the mouth. So if you look at this picture, you will be able to understand. So this is your pickup, uh, this is your uh, first impression and this is your pickup impression. Yeah. So if you're doing a mandibular impression, this is how it looks like. So it's usually done for your distal extension uh, cases. Next comes your uh, jaw relation uh, record. So in your jaw, rela jaw relation, you would have observed on your uh, mounted cast that uh, whether the vertical dimension of occlusion is appropriate, it has been maintained or it has collapsed because you know that once uh, certain posterior teeth are lost due to any reason, there is usually a collapse of the VD, which has to be evaluated and studied in your uh, diagnostic mounting so one uh, and when you observe this uh, what you have to do is you you've got to uh, you know just uh, block out where there are undercuts and then you make your denture base and uh, the uh, occlusal rims are prepared with uh, modeling wax so the modeling wax when you are preparing how do you uh, determine the height of the rim so you will have to uh, have a look at it in the patient uh, on the patient cast so the teeth that are present uh, as you see in this cast, they are usually the index uh, as to where the level of the uh, rim should be. So this will be like a point of reference for you. So once you notice that uh, this is the height where the rim should be, then 
uh, this, this this is placed in the patient mouth and you can check for the centric relation record so this is how you place it in the patient mouth and make sure see if you have some vertical stops that is your anterior your upper uh, teeth come in contact with the lower teeth this is a vertical stop so when you have such vertical stops you know that the vertical height of the patient has not collapsed and uh, you can record it the height can be recorded uh, with the help of a bony gauge and of course post uh, recording of the centric relation record the next thing would ideally be is to do a phase 4 transfer uh, and uh, you know uh, mount it on a semi adjustable articulator with the help of lateral protrusive records so in the third image you see there's a bite fork and there is uh, uh, wax over there yeah uh, so post uh, this uh, is your uh, setting of the denture teeth uh, uh, so in your uh, denture teeth uh, uh, setting uh, what you will have to see is the first thing is your uh, you know the uh, centric occlusion whether it is coincidental with that of the patient or not because sometimes when you're mounting there are chances of your cars moving and you should make sure that your inter occlusion record material is stable and uh, your cars are in position so if required the lower cast will have to be remounted so you should ensure that the centric relation record is maintained and uh, while you are while you are doing the teeth arrangement you have to look at the patient's aesthetic desires so when you are uh, speaking to the patient uh, post your uh, vertical your jaw relation records you must mark the uh, high smile line low smile line the mid line the canine line all of these have to be recorded and they have to be discussed with the patient's patient very clearly and their consent has to be obtained and uh, for the anterior plane of occlusion in case of anterior teeth are not present you can use the interpupillary guideline and also for, uh, for the canine eminence can be also used for uh, placement of canines and uh, for your uh, posterior yes the plane of occlusion the alatragus line will be helpful in um, keeping the plane uh, oriented according to how the patient's uh, oral cavity is so if you see in this picture the teeth are arranged in this way and then so once the teeth are arranged as i told you you mark the high lip line then characterization so characterization is one word uh, which all of you must be familiar with uh, uh, sorry must know about uh, is that uh, some patients are very particular and uh, they might not like the conventional uh, way of bearing their uh, complete denture processes so such kind of patients they ask for minor uh, changes in the denture so that it doesn't look like an artificial arrangement but uh, it looks more natural so to uh, bring such kind of changes what can be done is we can just create a, a artificial midline uh, like a diastema then you can rotate some certain teeth and you know increase the uh, vertical overlap uh, sorry the horizontal overlap and make it look more proclined or make it look more prominent or overlapping of certain teeth or you know if the uh, certain teeth are missing you can remove those teeth so such kind of changes that are made to make your natural con con uh, conventional denture to look more uh, like their natural teeth like the natural arrangement is called as characterization so and also for certain people they they are not comfortable with the color of the dentures that you use so in such kind of cases what you can do is you can uh, you know you can use uh, pigmentation uh, you know for colors and uh, create artificial pigmentation and uh, you know uh, bring stains so that it looks more or less like the natural uh, gum shade of that particular patient so uh, you have to evaluate all the tooth modifications make sure that you know your intraoral examination the findings that you see must coincide and they must be correlated with that on the articulator and uh, during the trying stage you have to ensure the patient that this is how their final denture is going to look like and next coming to the most important part of your uh, construction of this immediate denture is the laboratory phase so whatever teeth you are going to uh, remove on that teeth you are going to mark x 
sometimes it might be that you know you are not going to remove all the teeth you might have to remove only few of the teeth uh, so in those kind of cases you have to mark an x on the tooth so that you uh, don't uh, uh, you know get confused as to which tooth has to be extracted and as you notice in this picture there is a blue color pencil marking that is present at the cervical line and below that is a red color marking uh, that is to demarcate um, um, up to which level there is a chance of the soft tissue that can uh, collapse inside in inside after the extraction of the tooth so what we can do is you can just use a saw cut off the tooth and use an extra uh, carbide burr to just trim the uh, extraction side and make it look more concave like shape and uh, usually we have to trim the facial portion more uh and uh, less of the lingual or the palatal side because the, the the chances of collapse of the tissue on the facial side is more than that of the uh, palatal and the lingual side so in this image also you see uh as i mentioned you have to mark the smile line and the incisal edge so you are leaving a leeway a gap uh, as and you're anticipating that this much is uh, on this line between the gingival margin marginal gingival tissue and uh, the line where it is marked that that is the amount of tissue collapse that you are expecting so when that much of tissue collapse is there so your tooth arrangement will be in such a fashion that the cervical portion of your artificial tooth should be coincidental with this marking yeah so and as mentioned the lingual and the palatal tissues also uh, should not be trimmed much and uh, uh, also suppose if you are doing something called as a immediate overdenture in those cases your overdenture abutments uh, they should be just 3 mm above the gingival margin that altogether is a completely different uh, topic and uh, also the intercanine distance can be uh, a uh, mark with the help of bolly sketch so this image you see that's how you remove the extraction uh, sorry you remove the tooth that are going to be extracted and this is how your arrangement goes so in this arrangement you have to notice that i uh, notice and make sure that uh, the midline is still coincidental with the soft tissue landmarks that has been marked on the cast and because because when you place it in the patient mouth it should look like how uh, it is uh there on the cast so then coming to your trimming the cast how are you going to trim the cast so according to kelly uh, uh kelly's rule of uh, thirds the labial aspect has to be uh, divided into three equal bands of uh, gingiva and uh, you know uh, you've got to see that uh, it's more of the labial portion that you're going to uh, trim and the lingual portion of the cast is just contoured very uh, slightly and uh, you were not going to touch too much of the uh, cast so if you look at this cast in the picture one you see that there's a marginal gingiva that is marked and uh, in the second image the tooth has been knocked out just at that level of the marginal gingiva uh, uh, at this point and that was they are leaving a concave depression this is according to the article uh, written by kelly and uh, so and this is how you contour it and you create a a uh, depression like surface so after which so the extent as to which how much the cast is going to be uh, trim is that uh, you know uh, you are anticipating how much of gingival tissue is going to collapse and recede in that area so it also depends on the patient's uh, you know uh, 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 condition or the patient's uh, uh you know active periodontal disease if it is very progressive you can expect that the gingival tissues can collapse slightly uh in a, uh, like inward and uh, you must anticipate how much the uh, loss of bone height uh, without any uh, um you know uh, loss of uh, palatal or lingual bone so once the trimming of the tooth has been carried out uh, next comes your uh, you know wax contouring and flocking and then your wax wax up and you know the debaxing stage so once your uh, tooth has been placed and then uh, you know uh, you have to just ensure that the acrylic has to be thick then uh, you have to you know preserve also the phase 4 records because you might have to do the remounting post uh, 2 to 4 weeks so you can keep the phase 4 record then uh, and uh, once your uh, teeth arrangement has been done 
to preserve the carving what you can do is you can make a putty index and place it over the teeth and then pour the second uh, do the second pour so that the carving can uh, will will be preserved by putty but whereas if you're doing with the uh, you know your pop what happens is there are chances that pop is pop is definitely fragile and the the uh, you know the stippling that you create on the wax up might be lost so in such kind of cases you can do a putty index on the teeth arrangement and on that you will do your second pour that's one way of preserving your uh, wax up and the carving that you do and then after that other ways it is always uh, just similar to that of your conventional complete dentures how you would be doing the uh, processing uh, so during this processing phase once you have done the de-waxing so once you've done the de-waxing what happens when you open the flask you see that your teeth are on one uh, flask and on the counterpart you see that your uh, 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 you know the prepared uh, cast is there so on that cast what you're going to prepare is a surgical template so uh, by by definition pharma said that a surgical template is a thin transparent form duplicating the tissue surface of an immediate denture and is used as a guide for uh, surgically shaping the alveolar process okay so there are four methods of doing the surgical template that is by vacuum form method or you can do a sprinkle on technique but you if you are doing a sprinkle on technique for whatever it is please ensure that you will have a separating media that is applied on the cast and uh, either by uh, you know using a processing processing a template in clear acrylic so you have something called as clear acrylic resin but that of course is a lot of uh, time taking procedure because you have to do the wax up then you have to do the flasking then de-waxing and again heat processing with the clear acrylic material which which is quite cumbersome and uh, i think uh, vacuum form method is the best thing to do and it's much easier uh, to do as well or otherwise you can use a light cured clear acrylic uh, material but also in this you should just ensure that uh, the master cast is not disrupted so if the master cast is damaged uh, during your uh, processing what happens is there might be uh, you know rough irregular surfaces that might be formed on the on the surface of the denture so uh, yeah so once you have finished the uh, fabrication of your surgical template you clean it trim and polish it and keep it aside in one uh, package which is having some sterile liquid so that you keep uh, there's no bacterial contamination and then processing and finishing is just like that of your uh, complete dentures and i i'm sure you don't have to go through all that i i hope that you will be aware of what uh, has to be done and once you have taken out the denture please ensure that you know the under surface uh, sometimes uh, some of the students do come up with uh, doubts that as in can the tissue surface of the uh, denture be polished or trimmed yes of course you can trim to an extent it's not like you are going to shave a lot of uh, uh, you know the acrylic material but if there are any blebs of acrylic or if there are any uh, rough Uh, surfaces those are things which you will have to slightly remove it away with a polishing uh, burr or you might use a mandrel to just uh, sandpaper that area and uh, also you must use some polishing paste and pumice to uh, fine polish it because you should understand that your master cast uh, is made up of dental stone and definitely there will be some irregularities or some rough surfaces Uh, unlike your soft tissue which is smooth your the mucosa is smooth and it does not have any rough surfaces so hence polishing is allowed on the tissue surface of your denture so once you know that it has been uh, completed then uh, both the denture and the surgical template have to be secured in a chemical uh, sterilizing uh, solution in a bag and you can wait for patient for delivery so the next appointment is your uh, surgery and your denture insertion so at the time of denture insertion as i mentioned if you are doing an over denture immediate uh, uh, over denture immediate uh, you know partial denture or immediate complete denture in those cases what you are going to do is after the endodontic treatment has been done the abutments have to be reduced then or otherwise if you are doing a conventional immediate denture extraction of the teeth very carefully and so you should be able to perform a non traumatic extraction of the teeth 
because sometimes in our fear when we are trying to extract the tooth uh, the traction that we give for our teeth might be uh, too uh, might lead, uh, might have too much of pressure or force on that area which might break the labial uh, cortex of the uh, tooth socket so in such kind of cases you are uh, you're not helping in preservation of the labial bone let's say that uh, all and always ensure that nowadays we are moving to a stage of you know having dental implants placed in um, you know edentulous patients so you should also not compress the socket but you should just let the socket heal uh, usually that is one thing which we learned earlier when I was uh, doing my undergraduate, you know, our, uh, we were taught to compress the socket. But later studies show that while compressing the socket, you are, uh, you know, causing more rapid, uh, more or uh, rapid uh, uh, resorption of bone in that particular site. So such sites have to be preserved and, uh, you know, um, so in those kind of cases, what you've got to do is that you don't compress the socket and you carefully uh, do a non-traumatic extraction so that the socket will be preserved. And uh, once the extraction has been completed, you take your surgical template, that is your clear acrylic template, place it in the patient's mouth till it fits and adapts to the uh, oral cavity uh, without any kind of irregularities. So if there are any bony projections or if there are any, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, irregularities those areas have to be trimmed with help of bone rongers you have to uh, do uh, osteoplasty and you know make sure that the surgical template fits in and it contacts all the tissue surfaces uniformly so hence the surgical template is just like a guide helping you to uh, you know create the same surface as that of your master card so that your denture fits in the same place without any issues. So once the trimming has been done, uh, if required, if and uh, the soft tissue uh, can be sutured properly and uh, that area can be covered with uh, something called as burlu foil. And um, once the extraction socket is cleaned and uh, clean and disinfected without any kind of blood clots, then you can go ahead and uh, start placing your denture. So while you're placing the denture itself, you should ensure that there are no uh, bony projections and the patient does not have uh, uh, any sore spots. So if there are any pressure indicating areas, those areas have to be trimmed and later at a later stage you can uh, line it with a tissue conditioner. So you have to also check at the denture heel areas uh, if there are any interferences and once all these interferences have been removed and you know that your denture is adapted well to the uh, you know tissue surface with the help of some adequate frenal relief that is uh, after all this is done that is when you're going to look at occlusal prematurities you will never look at occlusion first you will all uh, the the uh, key point here is that you should ensure that your denture fits and adapts to your uh, soft tissue well and after it is adapted well that is when you're going to look at your uh, point of occlusion yeah so you have to check for occlusal prematurities and uh, you know if any high points or you know uh, interferences in lateral uh, right and left lateral movements then you've got to uh, remove the interferences and then trim any bumps or projections of the tissue conditioning material inside the denser so that you know you have uh, adequate healing and the next one is your uh, post-operative care so what are you going to instruct the patient in the first 24 hours they have they should uh, avoid hot liquids alcohol and rinsing uh, then uh, till 24 hours the patient is not allowed to remove the dentures then um, also the patient uh, uh, should have uh, take an ice pack at least for minimum of 20 minutes so that the inflammation swelling and discoloration uh, will reduce and then uh, you should also instruct the patient that no matter what they should not be removing the denture because once they try to remove it it will be very difficult for them to reinsert it in the oral cavity and next uh, you should also educate the patient about the pain that is because of extraction sometimes they are confused that the pain is because of the 
uh, you know the denture and not because of the extraction so for which you have to tell the patient well advance well in advance that you know this they, they will encounter pain and of course you should give your antibiotic uh, prophylaxis so that they will uh, also be uh, not developing any kind of infections and of course along with that you can give some painkillers so post 24 hours the patient has to come back to your uh, dental office and uh, you will have to check for sore points and uh, if there are any so, uh, soreness uh, uh, or um, because of the eminence or tuberosity areas near the retromalahyoid areas undercut areas everything has to be relieved and uh, you can give a tissue conditioner and if there are any uh, gross uh, occlusal discrepancies that has to be dealt with then uh, evaluate the denture for uh, you know for retention then after that you can ask the patient to go so at the time of the 24 hour visit you're going to already teach the patient how you are going to take it out carefully and reinsert it and uh, so uh, then they have to keep wearing it and then you also advise them uh, later when they come back for the post-operative uh, week so uh, so you have to counsel them uh, that it, uh, the seven days will be very difficult for them and you know they've uh, they've got to uh, you know just uh, uh, keep track of you know how uh, things have to be done and um, then after the you know uh, placement of the denture you, you can now that is post our 24 hours visit the patient can uh, gargle three to four times a day uh, and so that you know they keep the extraction socket clean and they don't have to uh, have any kind of uh, microbial contamination and so when they come back in the, uh, after the after a week's time what you want to do is you want to remove all the sutures and uh, and also the patient can uh, after one week then patient can start removing the denture from the mouth during the night and of course yes please uh, place it in a uh, bowl uh, of clean water so that's uh, about the immediate complete dentures i hope i was clear and uh, finally to summarize so immediate dentures of course, they play a uh, important role in today's treatment modalities, and especially for those patients who have a high uh, a profile wherein uh, they cannot avoid social gatherings or meetings. They uh, and where wherein their aesthetics and function is definitely important, and uh, it also helps in psychological support after extraction and uh, during the healing phase. Uh, so. Although the technique is more demanding than your regular complete dentures um, for both the patient and the dentist, if the patient is informed properly and if the patient has consented to, uh, you know, to get such kind of treatment done, uh, then uh, and if the uh, dentist is also having the expertise to do it, then an appropriate type of media denture can be uh, can be done and uh, there is definitely a good prognosis for uh, such kind of uh, cases so uh, and this is about um, immediate complete dentures if there's anything else that you would like to clarify uh, you can just get back to me and i would like to uh, brief on any of the doubts